All right, today we're going to do part two on our filter fundamental series for Flight 1 and Betaflight. We're going to look at the dialogues and the settings and we're going to kind of break it down but trying to keep it as basic as we can. Okay, but before we get into it, if you haven't seen the Betaflight and Flight 1 filter fundamentals video, go ahead and pause this video and go check that out. Six and a half hours later. So now that you're back or still with us, what we're going to talk about is essentially the filtering tabs on either Flight 1 or Betaflight. There's a lot of similarities between the two, as you can see here just in this, you know, both bi quad filter, bi quad filter, you know, this bi quad, bi quad as well. And we're going to talk about these settings and how you kind of can either look at some log data or with your flight feel and you know what what should you set here for each of these firmware packages and, and try to figure that out a little bit one big fundamental difference in filter tuning is whether you're doing 8k mode or 32k mode now if you're in flight one you're 32k mode all the time there's not an option and in beta flight there's an option for either like i said 8k mode or 32k mode so in 32k mode all the calculations uh, have a shorter winter to run in. The sampling is faster. It's sampling um, every 0 0.00003125 seconds versus 8K. It's sampling at 0 0.000125 seconds. Okay, so when you look at the difference between those two sampling rates, the differential is 0 0.00009375 seconds, which equates to about 0 0.09 or let's just round it up. 0.1 milliseconds. So the difference between 32K and 8K in sampling speed is 0.1 milliseconds. And when we're measuring phase delays, we've talked about in filter fundamentals, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, go stop and go check that out. Uh, we're talking about one millisecond, two milliseconds. So we never ever want to add filtering in that increases phase delay by one or two milliseconds, you know, we don't want to go from 8K to 32K, you know, to save 0.1 milliseconds, but then add in one or two milliseconds of phase delay for filtering. So that's just looking at sampling, but there's another factor here as well. So I think on beta flights, the best way to show that, you know, on beta flight, you don't just simply grab this slider and slide it up to 32K. Well, why not? You know, why, why can I slide it up between 8K down to 1K or whatever? I can slide it through here, but why can't I just slide it up to 32K? Why do I have to check this checkbox? Well, the hardware, the gyro chips coming from Invincense, which all the gyro chips do except for one board, which is the Radex, has the Bosch, and that goes up to uh, 3K. It doesn't even go up to 8K, which there's, I'm not, there's no knock on that. I'm just saying that's how that one works. They have two modes in them. Just It's how they're kind of programmed. They either have an 8K mode or a 32K mode. That's it. So uh, in 8K mode, the gyro chip is sampling in 8K. So all boards by default, when you see it, the slider go from you know 0.4, or it actually goes lower, um, 0.25, kilohertz up to 8, you're in 8K mode. So the hardware on that gyro chip is sampling at 8K. I don't care if you put this at 4K, your gyro chip sampling at 8K. Now Betaflight and 4K is just taking every other sample. And if you put it down at 2K, it's taking a quarter of the samples. So 4K, half samples, 2K, quarter of the samples, you get the gist. To go into 32K mode, you have to check this checkbox here or hit that slider. Then that pushes the gyro into 32K mode. And then example here again, if at 32, you're taking every sample, 16, every other sample, eight, every quarter. And then if you go down to 4K, every eighth, so on and so forth. So there's really only two modes, again, 32K or 8K, regardless of what you select here, you're setting the hardware to do one or the other. Now looking at my filter calc tool here, which again is at tiny, dot cc forward slash filter calc you can download that the latest one is for beta flight 4.0 and it, it's it would work for flight one as well we'll talk about that here in a second you can kind of see um, there's another thing that occurs when you switch from 8k mode to 32k mode that gyro has an internal low pass filter it's called a digital low pass filter because it's an you know anything that's a, a real movement that's called analog right and then we digitalize it 
by taking samples every 32,000 you know, 32, every second or 8,000 every second. That's we're digitalizing it. So that digital low pass filter, you'll see it referred to as a DLPF for shorthand. That filters the data before Betaflight even receives it. Um, when you talk with Flight One, a lot of times they'll say it's kind of a, a hidden filter, and it—I mean, it, it's in—you don't see it in the firmware because it's in the gyro chip. So yeah, it's it's, it's a little hidden. And uh, but if you look in there, there's a difference in how the, how uh, much phase delay that filter has. So in 8K mode on any gyro chip that you've ever used, the digital low pass filter adds almost a millisecond of latency. So it adds, you know, the, it does its sampling, it, um, before it even passes that to beta flight, since flight one you can't use 8K mode, uh, it will add about 0.97, you can see it right here, in phase delay. That digital low pass filter is at 250 hertz, and you can see it right here. If I change this from normal to 32K normal, then you can see that digital low pass filter moves up to about 3000 hertz, but you can see that phase delay, that, that latency, that lag on the data um, that, again, we talked in the filter fundamentals, so go refresh that if you're not following me, goes down to about 0.11 milliseconds. So that's great. 32K mode is the way, right? Well, it seems like everything in life, there's a yin and yang. So here's the downside for that. In This is the gyro for the same quad, same board in 8K mode. And you can see the vibration. This is the raw gyro data. So that, when I mean raw, it's not really actually raw raw. It's really after that digital low pass filter. So it's the data that Betaflight is seeing from the, the hardware. So it already has that 250 hertz cutoff digital low pass filter set and you can see the noise you can see the amplitude of that noise and that's still a little too much yet we need to filter that out that was the real big thing with beta flight that's what beta flight added from flight or um, from clean flight is they added in the first low pass filter that the firmware was doing so you can see that's that's the noise level this is 32k mode now this you know we have lower latency like this data already has a millisecond of delay in it this does not it only has about 0.11 milliseconds not 0.97 but you can see it's the amplitude of that noise and the, the frequency is a heck of a lot more so that's kind of the differential like okay if we're gonna have we're gonna move that digital low pass filter up it's gonna have less phase delay but then we need to kind of open wide because it's going to send us a lot of the raw, uh, more of the raw data from the gyro, and you're really going to see how much noise is actually in the chip that it's reading. What also adds to this a little bit is that since you're sampling at 16, or you know, you're sampling above 8,000 samples per second, you're going to, it's going to be a lot more, I don't know if I want to say, sensitive might not be the right word because that might sound good. It's actually kind of bad it's oversensitive and you're going to pick up all these little micro oscillations and we really again back to the filter fundamentals if you look at any of these graphs we don't want any of this data at all we're only interested in down here at like 50 hertz so we're trying to get rid of this so it's, it's kind of a two fur whammy but uh, honestly there's some great filtering in both of the firmware packages now that you can really squash this down pretty good and that's the big debate right now can the gyro do a better job with its digital low pass filter than we can with filtering within the firmware however i have great news i have an easy way to work through that debate yourself set up your filtering if you're in beta flight set up your filtering in 8k mode and then if you can switch to 32K mode without really adding any additional software filtering, great, you saved about 0.88 milliseconds of phase delay. If you have to stack on a whole bunch of filtering, more than 0.88 in latency, which you can use the filter calc tool for, that was a negative gain, then just go back to 8K. So that's how you'd settle that debate in beta flight, and we'll get to that here in just a second. One other crucial thing we need to understand for filter tuning is what is the problem? Why are we even doing this? And the, really the issue is the D-term. 
So this D term right here on our tunes. You know, the I term does not really react to noise whatsoever. We could let all the noise through. I term would be fine. It doesn't care. P term, eh, you can let a lot of noise through without really affecting the P term and getting P term oscillations. That's why if you ever have if uh, P term induced oscillations, which sometimes people approach me about that stuff with certain flight control boards, nothing that we have here, and I say, oh, that's, you know, you're, the filtering is not good. If you have P-term oscillations, you know, any noise, that means you're way off target if you have P-term oscillations. D-term is the, the most sensitive thing to any high-frequency noise because it really acts as an amplifier. So let's, let's show that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so on this black box trace, I have a couple different terms. What I have at the top is the raw noise, which, again, that's not technically true because this is an 8k log so it's after the uh, digital low pass filters but it's the data that the flight controller firmware is getting from the gyro after the one digital low pass filter and then after that then we have the p i and d so we can run a spectrograph on each of these and you just click on the on the the uh, little legend here to run the spectrograph and you can see this is the spectrograph for that noise which again in the filter fundamentals we kind of talked about what this is this is the frequency where the noise is and this is an amplitude of how this represents the amplitude of how high it is now i did bring this slider up here i expanded this and brought this up just for effect a little bit but you can see the noise and you can see again this is our motor band this is down at a, a hover you got a, a peak of noise here because i'm spending a lot of time at hover through here i'm not spending a lot of time um, in that range and there's just not a lot of vibration usually because I'm doing some moves and things of that nature and then this is up at full throttle so during moves it there's pressures against the quads which honestly reduces vibration as well so that's our spectrograph this is the data we're interested in this is you know raw motion for moving around uh, bank and left bank and right and then this is prop wash down here from uh, 30 to 60 maybe 70 Hertz at, at most and uh, so this is the data we actually want. We want to crush everything here. So you can see after we apply the firmware filters, boom, we knock any of that high frequency noise down. So that's great. Now let's see what the P term does. If we look at that and we run a spectrograph on that, you can see, yeah, it amplifies it a little bit because the P term has P gains, right? Obviously your higher P gains, the more that's amplified, but it's, it's not really that much. I term, let's run that, and you can see, you know, it's not amplifying anything. It's it's even less than the gyro because it's the the way the I term works. It almost has filtering kind of built in. It doesn't really have filtering, but it just the way it it operates, the mathematics inherently uh, smooth things out. Then let's now look at D term. Boom, D term amplifies way more. It's actually more noise in the D term than we had in raw. Well, how is that possible? How can we go from the raw noise being a certain amount of level, we're filtering it to take it down to here, which really crushes a lot of stuff, and then all of a sudden the D-term just crushes it, and it's a super amount of noise on the D-term. Well, it's because of how the D-term operates mathematically. So in the Filter Calc tool, you can go to the D-term Reaction tab, and I want you to focus here on this graph. This shows how the D-term works on gyro signal. So the blue is the gyro signal, and it has some, some shakes in it, right? And what the D-term does, it reacts to the gyro's movement. So it opposes it, because it's a dampening. It's a D-term, the dampening term. And uh, so when the gyro goes up, the D-term pushes down. When the gyro goes down, the B-term pushes up. And it's kind of just opposing all gyro movement and the reason it does that is it as the gyro it's kind of there to offset the p term so that um, it as it's approaching its target it it doesn't overshoot it so that's the intent so fundamentally it's a very simple equation you can look at the math here it's just the differential between the two so on and so forth times the gains but there's a weird thing that that happens so as this frequency of this motion so right now this motion is at 20 hertz so there's 20 um, up and down movements every second. You can see we're looking at 0.1 seconds here. So there's 25 of these, I'm sorry, every one second. So let's increase that. So as we increase this, this slope is going to get steeper, right? So that slope will double. So look what happens to the D term. 
you can see the slope doubled here. The amplitude of the sine wave for the uh, gyro signal didn't get any bigger at all. But the D term doubled in amplitude. You can see it's twice the amplitude here, and you can see it right here. This is the amplitude of the sine wave, the amplitude of the D term. Well, as I increase the frequency now to 100 hertz, so that slope gets steeper again, boom, now this is 10 times, the D term's 10 times the amplitude of the sine wave or the gyro signal. So this gyro signal max amplitude is still just one, but now the D term max amplitude is 10. So the D term essentially doubles in amplitude as the frequency doubles. So every doubling of frequency, the D term will double in amplitude. So that is why high frequency noise up here above 70 hertz and going up in spectrum, as this is doubling, if the D term is reading this data, which it is, it will double in amplitude. So it can really have a runaway effect. That's why we really need good filtering to totally crush this noise. And again, the D term's an amplifier. Any bit of vibration coming in, yeah, as that frequency goes up, the D term is going to double that. And before we get off this subject, back on the uh, filter latency page, you can see there's a little graph here now that when you turn on some of the D term filtering, it will show how the filtering uh, opposes it. This is the D term doubling as the frequency doubles, right? That's what that 45 degree line is showing. However, if you apply a simple filter, uh, essentially a first order, basically the PT1 filter in beta flight or the frequency filter in flight one will counteract that to kind of level that off. But it, it still you know, goes up or it's still 12 times the, the amplitude, 14 times the amplitude up here. So you really need stronger filtering, almost like a biquad filter or multiple filters in series to kind of bring that back down as you're getting higher in the frequency. That's, so that's what this is trying to show. So before we get off this and get back into the firmware, I just wanted to show some of those tools and hopefully that helps with some base understanding of what's going on, why it's so important. All right, folks, so we're at about 15 minutes here now. So we're going to cut here and we will bring you the rest of this in part three of Filter Fundamentals. I hope this helped lay the base work for it so we can get into the software and talk about some filter settings and recommendations. Honestly, there's a whole nother 20 minutes of this, so I'm just not going to put it all in there. Uh, you get bored and disconnect anyways. Let this video uh, kind of digest a little bit, sink in a little bit. Uh, if you need a refresher on the Filter Fundamentals, again, check that out. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you on part three where we go into the firmware, talk about some settings and some tweaking and uh, some of my recommendations there. Thanks. Hope this helped.